What's happening internet? IG here again with another Linux distro review. Today we're going to be having a look at Ubuntu's latest, Ubuntu 13.04. So as usual, Ubuntu being the flagship of the Linux desktop operating systems, there has been plenty of news of development and improvements that have been made to the Ubuntu 13.04 release cycle. Most notably, they've been discussing the idea of a rolling release, a concept of having one continuous release, just rolling in updates and adding new features as they come. So with that sort of thing in mind, the development cycle for Ubuntu 13.04 has been quite stable. And the same can be said for the rest of the operating system. So we're going to have a quick look at the new features that are involved. There's not really a whole bunch, but there are some nice improvements nonetheless. So let's take a look, shall we? Okay, so the Ubuntu 13.04 desktop has had a few tweaks to Unity and a few tweaks to the overall system, but not too much to write home about and especially doesn't look that different from 12.10. However, the dash and some of the icons here on the launcher do have some different icons, which is some nice fit and polish there, but it really does need to be a lot more widespread across the system. As you can see, these icons still remain the same. That's a minor gripe. The speed enhancements to the dash is very nice indeed. You can tweak a lot of these settings now and search for a lot of these different apps and settings based on just fuzzy searches. For instance, if I type photo trying to spell photo, then it will assume that I'm trying to say photo and will come up with the Shotwell Photo Manager. The selection of apps that has come pre-installed on Ubuntu has not changed either, although some of the online integration expands the out-of-the-box functionality of the overall operating system. You can see I have my Twitter account, my Google account, and my Facebook account all tied into the desktop here. And one thing that's new in 13.04 is you can customize which applications use the online data. For example, if you did not want to publish your pictures to Picasa using Shotwell, then you can simply disable that, as well as the Google Drive search plugin for Unity. If you didn't want your documents showing up in the Unity Dash, then you could simply disable them. Now, the Unity Dash has undergone some nice little improvements to make it quite a bit quicker as I mentioned before, and it also has a new social lens. Right-clicking on any item in the Unity Dash brings up more extensive previews and little options you can do here like like, view or retweet if it's a Twitter, or if it's a music file or photo, you can, ju you can jump in and click on the album art or play a preview of it which is all pretty cool stuff. For applications now, if you right click on an application, it'll give you a screenshot of the application and it will also give you options to uninstall or launch the application, which is very nice indeed. And also the transitions in the dash when you swipe between application previews is much smoother now and it looks very polished indeed. As per the last release, the Amazon search results are still displayed here, as well as suggestions from the App Store, both of which you can disable from the system settings. And also the integration of web apps is still here, so you can still pin and open different web pages as native apps using the launcher on the side here. Also, the Software Center is still the exact same as it was in the previous three or four releases of Ubuntu. And to be honest, this is this needs some work. It's definitely starting to feel dated and clunky compared to the app centers and the software centers that are being offered on Windows, Mac, and nearly every other operating system, both mobile and on the desktop. So Canonical really do need to do some streamlining here with the Ubuntu Software Center because it is starting to age. We also have some consolidation up here in the top right corner of all the system controls. We also have some nice modal dialogues here for both Bluetooth and the Ubuntu One Sync menu, which I don't have it running currently, but there are there is some new options here available if you have Ubuntu One Cloud Syncing set up. And of course, the power menu is still as comprehensive as ever. The only changes here are the new shutdown dialogues, which are very much Unity style now, so that's good to see. There also are some nice window management tweaks, so if you have multiple windows open of the same instance, then you can toggle between them simply by scrolling your mouse wheel, and it will toggle between the open windows, which is pretty nice. Of course, then you go by clicking on the tile on the launcher, you then get a selection between those two windows that you have open. And if you want to use your keyboard shortcuts, you can simply meta key and W, and that will present all of your windows as such. Now, another thing that's worth mentioning is the workspace comp is option that has been enabled since uh, time eternal with Ubuntu. It is now disabled by default, and I believe this is for simplicity for new users so they don't get confused, but a simple checkbox in the appearance behavior settings, and you've got it back. And not only have you got it back, you've also got a new option that will tell you which workspace you're on, as you can see here. And that brings us back to Nautilus, the file manager for Ubuntu, which is actually now renamed just files as per GNOME 3.8. Now, apart from the fact this wrench menu looks a little bit ugly for some reason, 
The overall look and feel of Nautilus or files is actually not too bad at all. The new icon theming on the side makes it very consistent with the rest of the ambience theme. And while it is functional, it doesn't appear to have as many settings or options as what the original file browser had. But as a basic file manager, it does the job very well and it looks quite stylish as well. Firefox 20 also comes as standard here, which is a much improved version of Firefox. You are also gonna get constant updates to the Firefox web browser. And then obviously LibreOffice also comes in at version 4.0.2, which is a very speedy, stable version of LibreOffice. So with all of these little tweaks and improvements, I guess the question on everybody's mind is, is this release worth upgrading to, especially from 12.04, the long-term support? In my opinion, yes. I believe that this is something that I would upgrade from 12.04 to use. The improvements with the dash and also the improvements with the online functionality and the speed of sim and simplicity of both of those uh, definitely give me tickets to go ahead with this. As 12.10 was just not stable enough for me to run on an everyday basis, I was having too many issues with it. 13.04 seems to have fixed those issues and the speed doesn't seem to be too bad at all for a modern desktop environment. Having said all that, I feel like Canonical could do more with their desktop as far as innovation goes, both with the software center and also with just some maturing of the ecosystem through filtering applications that are worth installing on Ubuntu, just to really demonstrate what the Ubuntu system is capable of. As it is the poster child of the Linux world at the moment, and it has a lot of commercial support from companies like Valve, it would be great to see some more careful filtering about what software is available to install on Ubuntu, at least as an option in the software center. But overall, I'm pretty impressed. It does what it says it's going to do, and it does it quite well with minimal hitches. Now, I don't know about you guys. You'll have to let me know in the comments below. What do you think about Canonical's focus? Because obviously, there hasn't been too much improvements on the Ubuntu desktop compared to the strides that they're making with Ubuntu Touch on both phones and tablets. So obviously, their focus is on convergence. Is that prior being prioritized over the innovation of the desktop itself? As always, it's an interesting project to watch, but let me know what you think in the comments below. As always, give the video a thumbs up if you like the video because it does help out the channel and subscribe if you like this content on a regular basis and I shall see you all again next week. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen.